Well, hello, and thank you for having me this afternoon. My name's Christine. Um, we're going to be talking about nutrition, and I know we heard a little bit about it in the speech um, earlier this afternoon, but I think I'm going to be talking about um, a little bit more of some of the common questions I get in a clinical practice. So if you can see this um, comic, it, the couple reading the papers looking through many, many different um, nutrition headlines, and they differ every day. You hear one thing about high fat um, one day, and then the next day something totally different is in the headlines. So hopefully I can shed some light into more of the research for you. The fundamentals of nutrition um, during cancer treatment is, number one, is to always communicate with your medical staff. Um, number two is recommendations for nutrition can differ depending on which stage of treatment you're in, um, if you're, you know, a survivorship, prevention. So it depends where you are in the progress. There's never any magic solution regarding nutrition. Everyone's different. Everyone tolerates treatments differently. And the goal is to focus on the big picture. Um, changes you make in your diet shouldn't be overwhelming. Um, oftentimes what we're going through with the treatment and everything else is overwhelming enough without having to make huge adjustments in your diet. But eating well can enhance the feeling of well-being, maintain strength and energy level, maintain weight and body's nutrient stores, help to better tolerate treatment side effects, help to decrease the chance of infection, and help to rebuild normal tissue and help recover and heal as quickly as possible. Nutrition's definitely a progression. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, pumping up your body's energy sources before surgery, combating um, different complications that typically arise as you undergo treatment, and then staying healthy for a lifetime. Before surgery, uh, you definitely want to get high-calorie, high-protein foods just to build up your nutrition stores uh, prior, because oftentimes after surgery, it's more difficult to, depending on what type of surgery, it's often more difficult for your body to adjust. So getting as much nutrition from high-calorie, high-protein sources prior can do well um, for helping you manage things post-surgery. Uh, small frequent meals are often very helpful. Dietary supplements can give you high calories. And then lots of different sources can give you protein depending on your lifestyle choices, whether or not you're a vegetarian, whether or not you tolerate different um, protein sources during the, um, which phase you're in. After surgery, it's often a progression because it takes your body several weeks to heal. So we often start with like a clear liquid, um, broths, jellos, juices, and advance slowly. And oftentimes the ultimate ending is the soft, low fat, low fiber bland. Um, foods high in sugar often cause what we call dumping syndrome, especially in peritoneal surgeries. And so high sugar foods are typically avoided. Um, high protein, again, helps your body heal. And the goal is a lot of these changes aren't forever. So you often, you know, there's different foods you can't tolerate as treatment progresses, but you can slowly add foods back as you're tolerated. Um, sometimes there are alternative feeding methods depending on the complications of surgery. So sometimes you're fed through your veins or through a tube. And variety is key for getting different nutrition through a variety of different sources because if you're not tolerating Let's say dairy. Dairy is often not tolerated, especially with bowel complications. You'd want to get those nutrients from other sources that can give you calcium and vitamin D. So variety is a key. Bowel obstructions are a common complication post-surgery. Um, definitely the first thing you want to do if you feel you're getting stopped up is to see your doctor. Um, you, may be able to, you may be unable to eat as your obstruction um, resolves or you may need more liquefied, pureed foods, often the consistency that can um, pass through a straw. And again, you may need an alternative feeding method, which is why it's important to see your doctor. Oftentimes during surgery, um, different parts of your bowel are, <coughs> or, you know, so colostomy or ileostomies are placed. And oftentimes, <coughs> 
Um, the biggest complication with those are foul odors or, you know, gas causing foods that can make um, moving your bowels uncomfortable. So again, it's just adding food back slowly, um, small bites, chewing thoroughly, small frequent meals is always key. Avoiding really spicy or fried foods and foods high in sugar again. If you drink from a straw, smoke, or chew gum, that often causes more gas, and staying hydrated can help um, move your stool along as well. These are the foods that may decrease odor. Uh, buttermilk, parsley, yogurt, kefir, which is a Greek yogurt, and cranberry juice. Um, these are some of the foods that you may want to avoid to, that may increase odors. Sometimes if you're finding you're having a lot of diarrhea, these are foods that may thicken your stool. And these are foods to avoid that might cause more gas. Constipation is very common with um, narcotic pain medications um, or during chemotherapy. You definitely want to stay as hydrated as possible. Um, and ask your doctor about stool softeners or laxatives. Nausea and vomiting, small frequent meals. A lot of times it's the odor of foods that can cause the nausea. So eating meals slowly, keeping foods at room temperature. Um, sometimes if you just drink your fluids between meals, it can help because you're not, get, you're not filling up and getting satiated with the fluids. Um, and you get more of the solid, more high calorie foods in during meals. Wearing loose spinning clothing can help the avoiding fatty, fried, spicy, and sweet foods. And sometimes just eating like dry crackers or toast prior to what you want to eat can help settle your stomach as well. Decreased appetite is usually huge during treatment. Um, so limit the restrictions while you're getting treatment. Small frequent meals again. Um, sometimes if you just keep snacks within easy reach, we mindlessly eat as we're doing things, as we're watching television, if you have something in front of you, it's easy to mindlessly eat. Um, focus on foods that are high calorie, high protein. Different, there's various supplements out there, um, dietary supplements, fluids between meals, exercise. Sometimes just moving around a little bit more can give you more of an appetite. Um, and change the form of a food. Reflux is often huge with um, the pleural mesotheliomas. So you might want to avoid the peppermint, spearmint, chocolate, alcohol, caffeinated beverages, peppermint, high fat, fried foods, nuts, and any fruits or vegetables that can cause symptoms because it varies from person to person. Again, nutrition is very individualized. Exercise, wearing loose fitting clothing, not smoking. Sometimes raising the head of your bed a couple of inches can help. Waiting before lying down, small frequent meals, and just being calm and relaxed when you eat can also help. For diarrhea, um, a lot of times with diarrhea, you're losing sodium and potassium um, when you're going to the bathroom so often. So you want to replete those um, in what you eat. So bouillon and broth are good. Bananas, peach and apricot nectar, boiled or mashed potatoes, and sports drinks all can help replace that. Binding foods are more, um, you know, your yogurt, your cottage cheese, your white rice noodles or potatoes, um, smooth peanut butter, white bread, canned peeled fruits. You want to avoid a lot of like the high fiber, which is on the next foods to avoid. The greasy fatty, that's one of the easiest things to be malabsorbed. So oftentimes avoiding the greasy fatty fried foods can help the raw vegetables with the skins, the seeds, and the stringy fibers if you're having a lot of problems with diarrhea. High fiber vegetables can cause gas. Very hot and cold beverages, so the extreme temperatures in the different beverages can cause diarrhea. Limit caffeine. Um, it's very individualized with the lactose. Um, if you're finding that milk products do cause more diarrhea, then that's uh, something you can avoid. I often get questions about probiotics. Probiotics favorably alter our intestinal microflora balance. They inhibit the growth of bacteria, they promote digestion, they boost immune function, and they increase resistance to infection. 
They're found in yogurt. Um, different brands vary greatly in their bacterial strain and potency. Um, there's various supplement forms, powder forms, liquid extract, and capsule. Who will benefit um, those taking antibiotics, those, you know, who are facing treatments and are unable to eat a very balanced diet? Yes? Probiotics are um, microflora that are good for your intestine. Um, a lot of times when you're taking um, antibiotics or if you're suffering from diarrhea, the healthy flora in our gut go away. So these are, um, you can get them in yogurt forms. A lot of the yogurts are like the Dan Actives and things like that. Um, can kind of replace them, um, the natural forms. Foodborne illnesses are often common, especially when your immune function is compromised. So you just want to wash all of your fruits and vegetables well. Wash your hands and um, food preparation services before and after handling food. Thaw the meat. Cook everything thoroughly. Avoid raw and use only pasteurized products. And sometimes just avoiding like the buffet styles or the... Um, you know, the giant candy bins at grocery stores and things like that, use those with caution. You want to refrigerate all leftovers, you know, even washing the tops of canned food items, and again, avoiding the self-serve bulk containers, um, like the soft serve ice cream machines. We've already talked about this a lot in the earlier presentation, and I'm in very much agreement. Definitely want to get your nutrition from Whole Foods, um, and you want to talk um, to your doctor if you're thinking about any form of supplement. But not, most of the supplements are not regulated, um, so it's hard to tell what they're putting in them. And as well, it's hard to replicate what there are so many different nutrients in like whole foods that it's hard to replicate it in a lab into a vitamin and a mineral. So you're not really sure what you're getting. So it's always more important to do the whole food. Um, you can, as she said, you can get too much of a good thing, um, getting too much of a, the RDI of different vitamins and minerals. So just remember, it's a progression. The intolerances typically don't last forever, and you can usually add things back slowly, back to your diet. Support's important, and I know many of you here today are, um, have supported your loved ones during this. Um, so the support is usually very, very helpful. And in the long term, um, you want to focus on the AICR guidelines that were talked about earlier, the fruits, the vegetables, the whole greens, and the lean meats. Um, so it's a progression. Thank you.